Hey there, I'm Mary Gilkerson, and as an artist who paints the Georgia, South Carolina coast, I'm always looking for better ways to capture the water that's such a huge element of the landscape. Water's one of my main sources of inspiration. I love being close to it, watching it, even just watching the tide change. The way it changes with the light is mesmerizing. I could watch it forever, and I love capturing that in paint. But like lots of artists, I used to get really caught up in some of these common mistakes. First, using the same blue or gray uh, color for the whole area of the water. Keeping the same value overall, which makes the water tilt up instead of laying down flat. Ignoring the effects of the land and the sky on the values and the reflections in the water. Not lining up those reflections with the, the elements of the landscape above so that there's that misalignment that makes the viewer think something's wrong here, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Keeping the same even pattern of color and stroke to create the ripples in the water. Again, that makes it stand up like a wall instead of laying down flat. Last, not align in those ripples and waves with the movement of the water. But two things got me past all that. The first is relatively easy, but it takes time. Kind of think of it as sweat equity. And that's observing water so that you understand how it works. I spend an awful lot of time just watching water in all of its forms in all kinds of weather. But what if you want to speed that process up? What if you just don't have that much time to wait around? Well, the second step that I took was one that a former professor suggested a long time ago. He said that for any problem we faced as artists, we could find the solution to it in the work of the past, in work by artists in the past. So to shorten that learning process, look at the work of other artists in the past and how they've dealt with the problem of creating the illusion of water. So let's look at Winslow Hummer, one of my favorite artists from the 19th century. There are three key things that I've learned from artists like Hummer. And these three are the most important to translating paint into the illusion of moving liquid. And the first of those is to pay attention to the flow and the movement of the water. The movement in the water is determined by the direction of its flow. And the faster the movement, the more ripples and white water there'll be and fewer reflections. Less movement equals a more reflective surface. Oops. So in this one, you can see that there are much stronger reflections because the water is still. There's a lack of movement in the water. So it's not broken by the churning activity of rapidly moving water, which creates foam. Reflections have lower contrast than what they're reflecting. And I also noticed that reflections are impacted by perspective. So things that are way, way far in the distance, we'll have a slightly distorted reflection and things that are closer, we'll have a reflection that's more of a straight up and down mirror image. You wanna paint reflections down from the source and that makes them look more realistic. The third thing that I learned from looking at Homer and other artists like him is to think about the color and the value. Look at the overall value pattern in the water, the big shapes, and realize that they're connected to the land and the sky. So they should include the colors that are used in the land and the sky in the water as well. And that ties all three areas together. So where am I in painting water now? Being in the low country gives me a lot of opportunities to watch and paint the water from the ocean to meandering rivers and still swamps. But looking at how other artists have dealt with those same challenges certainly has given me a head start. 
If you'd like to speed up your own skill in capturing the many moods of water, sky, and land, there are four spots remaining in my upcoming live virtual workshop, Cloud, Sky, Land, and Water. This workshop runs December 2nd through 5th. To learn more, just check out the link below. Happy painting, y'all. Bye-bye for now.